I'm sorry to tell you, your jet boil is not that great. And jet boils, what, yeah, I didn't even buy a jet boil for this video. That is how much I think they're not that great. But follow along and I'll tell you why. Hey, oh, Chef Corso, Monty Boca. I'm here to put you on the path to amazing meals on your outdoor treks. And we're gonna talk about stoves today because you gotta cook on something. And the positive here is your jet boil also isn't that bad, but it's also not that good. So what we're gonna cover today is stoves. And this idea came from one of you guys out there. You wanted me to dig into stove selection a little bit more. So that's what we're doing today. But we're gonna talk about what stove to bring or what stove to buy for your upcoming trips and some attributes that I look for in a good stove in a good cooking system. And before we get rolling here is we are not gonna look at every single stove ever made by every single manufacturer. Why? Because there's a lot. A couple just off the top of my head. We've obviously got Jetboil. We've got MSR, Primus, GSI, Snow Peak, Iwatani, and a couple others that I can't pull out of my pocket right now. But we've got a lot of options and all the brands have some general positives and some general negatives. There isn't a one perfect stove that I've found yet, but there are a couple that I really, really like. And another thing, if you are a jet boil owner, why aren't you cooking on your jet boil? I know most of you out there just use it to boil water for your bag meals. And then you just sit there and you're a bag eater all night. I don't get it. You have a burner, it cooks things. Why not make some things? So through this whole video, we're going to be making a great recipe that I really enjoy. It's also a really great recipe for your jet boil or your chimney style stove, kind of like this. And we're going to make Tom Yum noodle bowl. And if you're new to cooking outdoors, soups are a great place to start. They are very forgiving. They're super easy to, to, to put together. They're also really, really satisfying. A warm bowl at the end of the night is always something that tastes good and also there's a lot of different flavors of soups that you could make so if you do have a chimney style stove or a jet boil cook with it cook something in it and soups are a great place to start all right we're going to cover a few things that will help guide you in your stove selection for your your cook system and so the few things that we're going to cover today we're going to cover how many people are going on your trip what pots and pans you're gonna bring along, what stove you're gonna bring along and what that stove is actually doing for you in the cooking process, what kind of gas to bring along for your stove and pot and pan integration, which kind of is a sneaky one in the whole kitchen stove situation. All right, so the first question you need to ask yourself or your crew needs to ask the whole crew is how many people are going? because that will dictate what size a pot that you're bringing along. I've seen this before so many times and I don't get it, but everyone has their own little stove, their own little pot, and they're sitting on the stump, they're sitting on the rock, and they're all cooking their own dinner and there's no sharing of the, the food experience. The sharing of the food experience at that time is like, oh man, what do you got over there? Oh, you got some sloppy stroganoff? Oh, cool. Oh, what do you got over there? Oh, you got some pretty crappy jambalaya? Oh, great. So no one's really that happy. Meal plan together. Elect one person, it's not as hard as you think, but it's way more fun. It's way tastier and you can share the load as far as equipment and for food. So if you have a large group, maybe two to four to six people, you could take a two and a half to three liter camp pot that could easily cook up a huge nice batch of mango fried rice or a batch of ramen or a batch of oatmeal and everyone's having the same tasty thing for dinner. So I love these larger capacity pots for larger groups. If you're going on a trip with two or three people, these chimney style stoves are really, really great. And Jetboil does not own the market on these chimney style stoves. There are other options out there. This is Camp Chef that works really solid. It's almost exactly the same construction as a Jetboil and less money. This is a MSR wind burner, which works really well, but I've cooked for two or three people with this and it go, and it works really, really well. 
then it goes a little bit smaller. So if you're just going on a trip by yourself or you do just want a meal, meal plan by yourself, is we've got our half liter or smaller camp pots. We've got a Russian doll camp pot situation here. But all of these can cook things. All of these work really, really well but it just depends on how many people are going on your trip. And oftentimes if the trip is four or six people, I often like taking two, where maybe you've got this for morning coffee or tea, uh, one bat, small batch of something, and then this has the main meal, or you can kind of put them together, but you might be thinking, oh man, that is a lot of equipment. Well, you have four or six people going, share the load. You're all doing this together. Might as well share the load for the equipment and the meal plan. And next, we'll get into burner because that is what we're cooking on. So as we start to look at stoves, here are some things that I want you to look at a little bit more closely for your selection. So today we've got three options. We've got MSR Pocket Rocket, very, very small burner. We've got an MSR Wind Burner, very, very different construction. And we have a chimney style Camp Chef slash Jet Boil, pretty much same construction burner here. And what I want you to start to look at is the overall diameter and surface area of these burners and what they're going to do to your pot. So for a pocket rocket, pretty darn solid. It's meant to be small, compact, but our surface area of our burner is pretty small, which is going to actually work pretty well for our small surface area of our camp pot. And for our MSR wind burner here, we've got very, very different construction. We have lots of surface area, very even heat, really nice simmer control. And shockingly, you might have to check a couple other videos out there on YouTube, but this wind burner beats jet boil in the boiling water challenge by a few good solid seconds. And that's pretty interesting. But then over here, we've got this style of a of, of burner here. And I call these quarter size burners because they're about the size of a quarter. And this will do the job. It's fine, it's solid, but it, see, look at how big our pot is, how small our burner is here in relation to it. So it's not gonna give us a whole lot of even cooking. It's not gonna give us a ton of simmer control, which doesn't really help for cooking a great meal outdoors. So for me, I love taking along an MSR wind burner as far as my burner choice, mostly. Sometimes I'll take a pocket rocket too. Uh, depending on my trip, but this is really even cooking, nice simmering, and very, very fast as far as its overall cooking. So after you've selected your pot and your burner, really, really important to double check and double confirm your stove manufacturer on what kind of gas that you need to bring along. Is it propane? Is it isobutane canisters? Can it be both? Is it white gas? Is it camp gas? Is it methanol? Is it heat? Is it sticks? What are you going to use for your fuel and also where you're going to get that? So always, always double check with your manufacturer about what is the best gas to use for your stove. Really, really important and always important to have it on your checklist. All right, and lastly, here's one little thing that I think a lot of you don't think about, and that's pot and pan integration. And I know you've all had this experience where you have your pot on your burner 
and you somehow kick it over. Or you, you thought it was secure, but the mountain gods decided to, to tip it over and there goes your coffee, there goes your dinner. And it is a really, really sad time. So pot and pan integration is something that I look for as a pretty much a must have for almost all my trips because what that integration does is it's insurance. It's insurance that your soup or your dinner is going to be ending up in your belly rather than on the rocks or not burning you. You know, I know quite a few different guides out there around the country and they have horror stories of the soup pot spilling on people's shins or on people's feet and they have a terrible burn and then that's the end of the trip and they gotta, they gotta get them out of there. So I love pot and pan integration. And what I mean by that, there's a few different styles of this, but this camp chef and also similar to a jet boil will lock in place like that, which will help out a lot of things. But then also for this wind burner, we've got a little bit of integration there which helps us from tipping over, at least tipping over as easily. So to recap on our deep dive into stove selection, ask how many people are going, which will dictate what style and so what size of pots and pans that you bring along. What is your burner and what is it doing for you? Consider pot and pan integration in your selection. Put something tasty in that pot and then put it in your belly and enjoy. But get out there, let me know if you have any questions on these. Let me know if you have a video idea that you want me to cover, I'm happy to help. But get out there, cook something in your pots and share that experience. Boca Boca.